Prime Minister today committed to delivering on the Conservatives' election pledge to strip an additional £12 billion from the UK welfare bill. He signalled that next month's budget will include deep cuts to tax credits, the top-up benefits given to low earners. In a speech in Cheshire, David Cameron said he wanted Britain to become an opportunity society. The right track is to recognise the causes of stalled social mobility and a lack of economic opportunity. Family breakdown, debt, addiction, poor schools, lack of skills, unemployment. People, people who are capable of work but written off to a lifetime of benefits. Recognise those causes and the solutions follow. There's what I would call a merry-go-round. People working on the minimum wage, having that money taxed by the government, and then the government giving them back that money and more in welfare. We asked the Conservative Party to put forward a politician to discuss the cuts programme, but were told no one was available. We are joined from Westminster by Sam Bowman, Deputy Director of the Libertarian think tank, the Adam Smith Institute, and in Edinburgh is Keith Dryborough from Citizens Advice Scotland. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, Keith Dryborough, the Prime Minister, talking about extending opportunity. What's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong in principle with extending opportunity, but it's the, the way it's done. Uh, they're talking about cutting tax credits today. Uh, we know that there are 350,000 families across Scotland that rely on tax credits. 70% uh, of those are in, are in work, and they'll, tonight they'll be wondering, are they the ones that are going to be impacted? Uh, and thinking, well, I'm doing the right thing and going to work. Why is it that because my employer doesn't pay me enough, then I get my benefits cut? These are people doing the right thing, and it's not right that they're getting their benefits cut. Sam Bowman, are, are tax credits the right target? Uh, I think they're probably not, actually. I think working tax credits are a pretty good idea. The way we run them is a little bit complicated, and it can stop people who, need, who should be on them not getting them. But um, in principle, they're a good idea. Now, the Prime Minister made, I think, quite a good point, that we shouldn't be taxing people and then giving them money back in benefits. That makes no sense, and it's very complicated. But the problem with what was announced today is that all we're doing is cutting the benefits. We're not cutting their taxes as well. So that means people are going to be worse off without like, adding this, invest this incentive for those people to get into work. So what would you suggest would be the alternative? Uh, well, I'd like to see more targeted um, reforms of the cost of living. So um, across the UK, it's very expensive to pay for housing and childcare, and that's because we have some of the most highly regulated planning um, sections and childcare uh, regulations mm. in Western Europe. If we reform those, it would make both childcare and housing much, much cheaper, and that would mean that we could start scaling back the extent of the benefit system, but the people who rely on those benefits would have a much lower cost of living as well, so they wouldn't be feeling the pain. Would that be enough for you, Keith Dryborough, or does it need a, a completely different approach? Well, I certainly agree with those principles of um, you tackling the cost of living, but I would also say that you need to tackle the issue of low pay. I think we're in a, a low pay epidemic. I think in the last government that 80 percent of the new jobs were in low pay industries. And we have an epidemic as well of in-work poverty. So I think we really need to be encouraging employers to increase wages, to pay uh, the living wage and I think David Cameron and his government need to be encouraging employers to, to pay enough for their employees to actually live on. Uh, Sam Bowman, the minimum wage will increase but is there not a, a point that if, if as Keith says the, the wages increase go higher until the, they reach a living wage that, that might be more effective? Well, the Low Pay Commission, which sets the minimum wage, raises the minimum wage very slowly because they know, like most economists, that if we raise the minimum wage too quickly, we'll put people out of work altogether. And that's not going to solve anything when it comes to benefits. We're just shifting them from one kind of benefit to another. So raising the minimum wage, I don't think, is a magic wand. Um, I think it's true that we have a low pay problem. But actually, I think tax credits are quite a good way of solving that because they don't put people out of work and they don't, if they're done correctly, create bad incentives that keep people on low wage jobs. The problem is it's very difficult to see where, the go where else the government will cut. I would like to see a lot more bravery on pensions because we have this triple lock, which means that every year... Um, um, we raise pensions um, according to either 2%, according to inflation, or according to earnings, whichever is highest. Now, that makes no sense. The pensions bill is over £90 billion. It's absolutely enormous. And this year, inflation is roughly about zero. Um, we should be leaving pensions alone. We shouldn't be increasing the pensions at all because the cost of living hasn't risen this year. But because of this triple lock, we're throwing more and more money. And that is unsustainable. And it means that people who are in work and who are dependent on benefits like tax credits are getting their benefits cut severely 
when we should be sharing the burden across everybody who is dependent on the state. And um, really, a very small cut to pensions or a very small restriction on pensions will go a long way to making these welfare cuts. Would that be acceptable to you, Keith? Uh, I certainly think the government should be taking a much wider view um, of where the, um, the cuts should fall, if indeed they should fall at all. Uh, and actually the way they're going about policy at the moment, it, it feels that um, you know, they're making the targets of what to cut rather than actually thinking of how they can improve the system. It should be the other way around. It feels that they're making policies fit what they want to achieve, which is a, a, a cut in the welfare budget, which is only going to impact ne negatively on people's lives. Nonetheless, the, the, this government has a democratic mandate to, to bring in these cuts. I, I'm pretty sure that they, they, um, they did uh, say that there's 12 billion pounds in cuts, but I, I don't think that's what people voted on. Uh, and I think they themselves were surprised that they were going to actually have to do it. I think they expected to be in a coalition, and that's one of the things that they could actually trade away. Um, so I think they should be looking again to see whether this is actually something that's in the UK's interest and Scotland's interest. You know, in the interest of people that, that voted for them, or whether that's um, you know, another path they should be taking. Uh, Sam, with the growing numbers of working people struggling, and we saw uh, thousands upon thousands of people demonstrating at, at the weekend, Th these weren't just your regular protests. Are the government getting themselves into a situation here? I don't know. I was actually at the protest in London, and um, it really did look like more of the same to me, to be honest. But, I mean, mm. the problem is everybody agrees that we have to cut something. The problem is what do we actually cut? Um, I think that we could make the cuts a lot more straightforward and, and hurt a lot less if we were willing to do them across the board, to hit pensioners and actually hit middle class benefits as well, which I think David Cameron's announcement might do. Uh, child tax credits uh, go to couples who earn up to £41,000, which is, in my opinion, way, way too high, and um, should that threshold should be brought way down so it's much, much lower earners that, um, that are only, the only people getting these tax credits. But the problem is it's really hard to see what we can cut. The best way of making the cuts hurt less is by deregulating and liberalizing the uh, things that people rely on so they're cheaper. Those two key things are childcare and planning and for housing. If we can make housing and childcare much cheaper, all we need to do is bring our regulations to Western European levels. Okay. Germany is much, much less heavily regulated. Sweden is much less heavily regulated than okay. the UK. And they have very, very sound childcare systems and much cheaper ones. And Going to that level will go a long way to solving this problem. And they will need to leave it. Sam Bowman, Keith Schreiber, thank you both for joining us.